They say all good things must come to an end. For Boondock Nation, every season does too. And when that chapter of our story ends, we have pages full of incredible experiences from so many great rides. It's one exhilarating season after another, and before you know it, we've amassed a lifetime of good memories. This season was one of our best. And as they say, the best is yet to come. Filming this winter for season four of Boondock Nation has been so much fun. From being up in Revelstoke, British Columbia earlier in the year, to two shoots in Wyoming, to here in Bear Lake, Utah, uh, it's really been a fun year. Looking forward to doing it again. By the end of the first shoot, you're like, oh man, we still got three more of these. You know, it's long days and long nights, and you know, it takes a lot of work from everyone to make one of these, you know, shows happen. But by the end of the season, and you know, you're finishing up your last day on the snow filming, it's like, man, it just doesn't feel right. Like, you don't want it to end, but at the same time, you know, it's kind of rewarding. Now we can go out and play for the last couple months of the winter and, you know, have fun and ride sleds and do what we want to do. The build up to this shoot for me has kind of taken all season. I've been super excited from, you know, the moment that I knew we were gonna be coming down to Utah to ride. It's a place that, you know, none of us have ridden. The significance to make this Utah shoot for me was mainly timing because it was my spring break. I've always wanted to go to, to Utah. I've seen a lot of videos on Facebook and Instagram and it looked like sweet terrain. This is my first time riding in northern Utah. I wasn't sure what to expect. I know there's a lot of great riders that come out of here. Uh, so I was excited to see what we were gonna be riding in, the snowpack, the terrain. You got pillow lines, you got big mountains, you got you know cliffs, awesome tree riding. And uh, I think that's pretty cool to have just a few hours from Idaho Falls. Beaver Creek Lodge provided the perfect canvas for creating another backcountry adventure. A solid night of rest always results in a great start to a new day a new adventure, in a new place, and new friends to ride with. Calling the lodge and its surroundings home for a week was an easy thing to do. One thing that we kept saying over and over here is if you were riding here every week, you'd be a really good rider. The terrain is super diverse. Um, there's all sorts of big shoots to climb, jumps, you know, really technical steep tree riding. There's actually quite a bit of snow on the ground. Most of the spots out here are like 86 inches. So that's a pretty sizable base. I'm really looking forward to some spring riding this year. I think that's probably my favorite time of the year to ride is mashed potatoes and, you know, warm weather. One of the greatest parts of backcountry riding is not knowing what lies ahead. Even though we head out with a plan and a mission, well prepared for any challenges that might come our way, the elements, the scenery, the cast of characters are always shifting. We never really know precisely just how our story will unfold. Staying at Beaver Creek Lodge was really unique. Being up in the mountains at you know, 7,000 feet, slept really well. Um, being able to ride right from the front door was really cool. Waking up in the morning, seeing fresh snow in the mountains, nothing like it. I'd say my favorite thing about Beaver Creek Lodge was just you wake up in the morning, you look out your window and you're right in the mountains. Hop on your sled, fill up, and you're gone for the day. I'm Brian Lundahl, owner of Beaver Creek Lodge in Logan Canyon, and we're an all-inclusive snowmobile lodge. We have lodging, snowmobiles, meals, guide service, everything all on site. The first time I ever got on a snowmobile, I was 13 years old and was out through the, the neighbor's hay pasture and I've been hooked ever since. And by the time I was a little kid, I wanted to figure out how to make my, my living in the mountains. And bam, I've done it, I'm living the dream. We straddle the Utah-Idaho border, so both on the Utah side and the Idaho side, around 350 miles of groomed trail. For the extreme rider, we have steep tree climbs, we have chutes, just a lot of different geography in this area. We have almost two mountain ranges. The one to the west is much more extreme and, and wild, and the, and the mountain range to the, to the east is a little tamer. 
Our goal is to take you somewhere different every day. We got enough variety in geography and terrain, and generally we step it up. Each day is a little bit more advanced than the day before. A lot of our customers, they, they, they know what to expect when they get here. You know, we, we're gonna have good food, rooms are gonna be clean, the snowmobiles are gonna be new. With that in mind, they come back year after year after year. I like taking guys who've, who've had a lot of snowmobile experience, may not be mountain experience, because then we can just take them to the next level and show them some really fun stuff. Uh, if they've got that basic uh, knowledge of how to ride a snowmobile, we can just up their skill set and, and uh, show them a heck of time. Our mission for the day was to get into a new zone that is super deep and have some fun ripping with new riders like Tavern, Tanner, Brian, Nate, and Steve. Never ridden with those guys before, so it's really cool to get out in the snow, see how they ride the Polaris's, and um, they're rippers. It was so cool seeing everyone with different abilities together, and I think we pushed each other to our limits. There was a few times, you know, when we were following Brian up the trail, up the mountain or something, and it'd be like hard pack, nasty, run it out, like big climbs. You could tell Tavern, you'd just get like this different, uh, different mood on. You'd start moving differently, and the next thing you know, you'd just shoot up that thing. And like, I tried to follow him through some of the stuff, and we're, we'd like race back and forth up the trail, up the mountains, you know. And uh, you could definitely see that the hill climber in him was starting to come out, and I think he's probably getting a little excited for Jackson, too, to be honest. I've been racing for 12 years now, and uh, I've been part of Polaris Race Team for since 2009. My dad got me into snowmobiling at a really young age. When I was about eight years old, he used to put me on the front of the snowmobile between the handlebars and him, and we'd go all over, go up and down hills, it got me hooked. So I met Boondock Nation two years ago at the Jackson Hill Climbs. When I heard they were from back east, I didn't know how they would like this terrain. They handled everything perfectly. This group has a positive energy. I mean, everyone was just pushing each other, making them feel good when they did something cool. When you guys called me to come riding with you, I was stoked. I wanted to, I couldn't let that opportunity pass me by. Riding with Brian was, uh, was quite the experience. You know, you can just tell by the way that that guy gets around. He really knows where he wants to go and like he knows this terrain out here so well that you just tell him what kind of shot you're looking for and he knows he's got a name for where you're going to go and ride. And it was a real treat for me to ride the Boondock guys because uh, they're very talented, very athletic. And it was just entertaining for me to take them to these cool and awesome places. And then they did wild and crazy stuff that, you know, I never even see anybody do in those areas. They're just good old boys that enjoy a good time in the mountains. Day one was a blast. It finished perfectly at Cooper's Restaurant and Sports Bar where we grabbed some great tasting grub, then headed to our cabins to chill and rest up for a new day of exploration. Cooper's was fun. The bar setting was cool. You know, it's just across the border in Idaho. We had quite the crew there, JD, Tavern, Steve, awesome food, and just a super fun night overall. I really enjoyed the atmosphere at Cooper's. The staff was very friendly, the food was incredible, and it's an awesome place to hang out after a day of riding. A new day, a new chapter to write, and it all unfolds around the mountains of Bear Lake and the incredible setting of Sunrise Resort at Harbor Village. You couldn't ask for better hospitality and better knowledge of the sledding than we found at Garden City, Utah. We came to Garden City as a family and began to invest in some assets here, started in the outdoor recreation business. We found a need and an opportunity to get into our housing and lodging business, and, and we were able to buy this beautiful facility. We have 19 bedrooms, 18,000 square foot, three level facility that overlooks Bear Lake, as you can see behind me now. We have a 40 seat theater downstairs in the room where they can come and, and watch movies at night. We have two full service kitchens, one here on the main floor, one downstairs with a full large family room gathering. It creates an atmosphere of home, and that is our goal. As people come here, we want them to feel like they're at home, that they can completely enjoy the surroundings, feel comfortable, feel safe, and be in this incredible place we call Bear Lake. As you call us and you experience our, our process of designing an outing for you, it's gonna be a little more customized as we ask you, what do you wanna accomplish here? 
Is it about one-on-one -on -one time with communication as you sit around here? Is it getting into the outdoors? Being able to, you know, put together a full service package of sleds to a razor to snowshoes. That's how we've evolved and continue to evolve. You know, my second son lives up here and is helping us with the lodging business. And uh, we continue to look for ways to just continue to grow and enjoy uh, this family business that we've, that we've built. I've had the opportunity of riding really all over the Western Hemisphere and, and even in Russia. And every time I come back here, it's just like, why did I leave? We have enough terrain that really it can get spread out and, and it's really not like you're on top of each other. And there's a lot of different places that you can access from, especially if you're staying down here in Bear Lake, you don't have to go out of uh, one different place. I like just going out and just hammering down as hard as I can, no matter where it is. As soon as you meet Nate, you can just tell that guy is a good rider. He's pretty impressive to watch in a snowmobile and just makes it, you know, that much more fun watching a guy like that rip around. We rode with Tanner Gittens, who is another awesome rider from the Utah area here. I've been watching his videos on YouTube for a few years now and wanting to ride with him, so that was awesome to be able to connect there. Tavern Rupp, you know, met him at the hill climb a few years ago and you know, we talked about riding with him for a while now, finally got to get that done. And then uh, J.D. Driscoll, another guy, we rode with him in Togedy a couple years ago. Just awesome human beings, and uh, it was really fun to get them all together on the same, same episode and you know, ride together for a few days. You can tell how good somebody rides in the first five minutes of, of riding with them, so I knew that I didn't really have to take it easy, and, and it was fun just kind of feeding off of everybody and you know finding lines everybody's just excited to go out and have fun it really was awesome the challenge of riding here is not only matched by the natural beauty of the area it's easy to see why folks don't ever want to leave when i look at a business opportunity or why i would want to live here and why i would want to do business here and why would i want to recreate here it is still just a very untouched raw area, which, you know, we don't want to ruin that, but we also want to help other people experience that. Plus, we just love it. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you have this lake that is 50 miles in circumference that is azure blue. They call it the Caribbean of the Rockies, and it truly is. You get out on this lake in the summertime, you can't tell where the surface starts. It is so clear. I personally have snowmobile in a lot of different places, and I will put this up to any place from beginner to extreme back riders. That's why we come here, and that's why we live here, and that's why we do business here. A couple years ago, we decided to create accessibility to a backcountry site. It would be cool to put winter tracks on these Polaris razors. I actually have never really ridden in a razor before, not to mention one with tracks, so that experience was pretty cool, you know, to be able to go up there and go and break our own trail, essentially. They can really get through some stuff, and you know, if you have a clear day to go out and do that, the experience is really cool. For someone that loves photography, or someone that's not wanting to get on a sled, but has the ability to go sit in one of these beautiful machines, it's just an awesome experience to do, and find your way really into the backcountry. As colossal as the views are around Bear Lake, and as huge of an appetite as you work up while riding out in the backcountry, so is the size of the pizza at Bear Lake Pizza Company. Only a meal of this caliber could call us in from the great outdoors. As far as Bear Lake Pizza Company goes, the first thing we saw is the giant pizza box on the right-hand side in one of the booths that was like the size of a human. <laughs> we sat down and waited for you know everyone to get in there, and they walked out with this pizza. It had to be 40 inches across. The thing was ridiculous. The pizza at Bear Lake Pizza Company is hard to beat. The 28-inch old Ephraim, it'll feed the entire group, and you'll still have a bunch left over for lunch tomorrow. I'd say the most challenging part of the trip for me was just trying to keep up with these guys because they have so many more days on the snow than me. But it's fun because I like getting pushed to my limits and looking over a hill and like, oh my God, they actually went down that and then just going for it. If you ever hear Bear Lake or someone bring it up, 
they're definitely going to tell you it's an amazing place just because of the views here, the people here are amazing. You can tell it's a really tight-knit community. If you ever wanted to have a wedding here or a corporate retreat, it'd be an amazing place to do it because it's so laid back and relaxed. I really can't say like one thing about this trip has been you know, better than anything else. The whole trip combined, I think, is, is, is incredible. This whole experience has been second to none. And, you know, you can't put one experience past the other. It's just been such a great time down here in Utah. Uh, I'd say the most interesting experience on the mountain this trip was the last day. I got stuck really bad and like nose down in between a cliff and some trees and that was like a four or five man job to be able to push it down, side hill it in reverse out of like a gap in the trees. That was kind of nasty. I think we're going to have to go back over towards you, Jack. That might be the best thing to do actually. I have to say that is definitely <coughs> the most interesting stuck I've ever had in my life. I was not expecting that just that mound to just completely break away. And then just after that, Steve tried to ride down the spine pillow type deal and it looked different from the top and when he tried to come down it, it wasn't rideable and he couldn't turn around so he just pushed his sled off of it <laughs> and it just kind of just kind of fell. On top of that, Tanner's sled, a big pine tree got caught in between the track and the tunnel and we had to figure out how to get that thing out of there. That's a deep hole. Oh yeah. What way we want to go? Just there? I think if we can get it there, just give me a tug. I think it's coming right out. <laughs> That was a pretty interesting day, but we ended up stacking a lot of clips, having a lot of fun, and rode some fresh snow. My favorite part about being here in northern Utah was the drops that we found. A lot of cool pillows, a lot of cliff bands that you can hit, and that's kind of my thing that I've enjoyed this season, is getting into bigger and bigger drops as the year goes on. The cool terrain, it's like a skate park for snowmobiles. The thing that stuck out to me for this trip the most was probably the backcountry riding. It was awesome up there. We had a couple, like a half blue day and then a full blue day, which is really nice. The snow is, it's kind of in that tr transitional time of spring riding and winter riding. Another great thing was the lodging here. It was absolutely amazing. The people in the Bear Lake area are very friendly. As soon as we got here, going out to dinner, uh, it was like we were old friends, just sitting, talking with everybody, sharing stories. It's a unique situation because Bear Lake has so much tourism action in the summertime. In the wintertime, it becomes more like that small town feel, where everybody knows everybody, and they welcome us with open arms. So it was really cool to be here in the Bear Lake area and feel that hospitality. When you're up there on the mountain, and you see the clouds break through and you know you're gonna get a, a chance to see Bear Lake for a minute. It's pretty cool, like even today, the reflection from the mountains on the lake is insane. I, I definitely need to come back here and, and see that thing for what it's, what it's really worth. When we headed up, it was super cloudy. We weren't really sure what we were getting into going up. Found some fresh snow. Uh, we were ripping around and the, the sky started to clear up and we had a perfect view and that really made me realize that this place is a paradise. 